Hello there guys, it's me Unstable Voltage. Welcome back to episode 4 of Civilization 5 as Korea. And uh, we're still working on our settler to make our third city. We're just clearing out a few barbarian camps at the moment. It gives us a little bit of extra money, which is always nice. We are going to need to get some trade routes up and running quite soon as well, because we haven't really done that yet. Knew there was going to be a barbarian camp around somewhere. At least we found it now. A little bit closer to it than I would like to be. So ideally we want to get civil service so we can get some open borders, but that is quite a distance away. There's a few good things that we... We could grab. Um, I'm tempted to go and grab philosophy so we can get the natural college up and running. It might not be a bad idea. Um, we're going to heal this unit up a little bit before we move any further to the east. We did run into a barbarian, so that barbarian may have been from the camp that was down here, or there may be another camp over here to the northeast. We will have to check. But it's quite possible that we may end up finding some... Um, uh, antiquity sites that have been missed because we did find one in that general area which suggests to me that the AI um, hasn't been in that direction. Now antiquity sites only spawn at the beginning of the game so if there was an antiquity site there then that antiquity site has always been there. Um, let's keep firing at the camp. We want to get the camp cleared out. That'll be another 37 gold for us. Now we've got another annoying boat over here. You need to try and get rid of all these. There's quite a few little islands in the middle. Uh, you'll probably find that there are a few barbarian camps on those, which is probably where a lot of these ships are coming from. Uh, you are just literally going to fortify because we can't get open borders yet. And like I said, if the borders expand around them and then fill in the, the um, hex they're standing on, they might get squeezed out in the other direction. So we'll have to see what happens with that. We might not need civil service. We might be able to sort of be a little bit cheeky with it. Um... Now, my spearman has drill because there is quite a lot of rough terrain up here. There's a lot of hills, there's a lot of jungles, a lot of forest. I think I'm going to give the archer accuracy because the archers down here where we've got a lot of open terrain. Not only that, archers or ranged units are really good for firing at ships that are just off the coast. And because obviously water is flat, shock gives you a benefit on water and not drill. So Boudicca's quite at the top of the scoreboard right now. Now, another thing that uh, the Enhanced User Interface mod does, which is quite nice, is if you actually look here at the side of Napoleon, you'll see the icons for gems and for dyes and cocoa. Now, this represents items that they have for trade at, at the top, and at the bottom, items that we have that they would be willing to trade. So, basically... France has some gems that they're willing to trade. They have extra gems. And we have dyes and coca, which means the French don't have dyes and coca and they'd be willing to accept them in an exchange. I don't think we actually have a spare one at the moment. No, we don't. Seoul actually has one of each, although I think we are working on another coca because it says we do have one that we don't have... Um, uh, we don't have connected up yet. And as you can see at the bottom of this list, it's actually telling us what everyone's got. So the Inca has one marble and one cotton. The Celts have one furs and one truffles. France has two gems and one wine. And then it's got the city-states below that as well. So some really, really useful information uh, that you get from there. Um, let's continue to try and wipe this camp out. Hopefully we'll be able to move in there and clear it on the next turn before anything respawns in it. You watch a horseman pop out of it now. It's usually what happens. Ah, Genghis. Hopefully he's very far away. Not too sure how we bumped into him. It must have been a boat or something, or he has come and found us. Well, that's another encampment cleared. Choose production. We have finished our settler. So what we should probably do now is... Do we want to go Stonehenge? Do we really, really want to try and get a religion? Or do we want to go Artem Temple of Artemis for the food? I'm going to attempt the Temple of Artemis because the AI doesn't seem to prioritize that much, which, you know, might be a good thing. So we'll go for the Temple of Artemis. We have our settler. Now the question is, what am I going to do with this settler? There was a couple of choices I had. One was to come and settle down here so we could grab Soprada, which would be quite nice. Uh, the other one was to settle a city... Um, on one of these two tiles here. Now it would give us quite a bit of overlap. But it would give us a, uh, a canal city that we could use to get through these two bits of land. 
which could be very, very useful. We will be getting rid of this banana. In fact, I am actually going to do this, and the reason I, I want to try and do that is because not only will it give us a canal city, it'll mean we have slightly less distance to go for roads. Or, that said, at the same distance of road, we'll be joining up three cities as opposed to only joining up two. So it'll make roads a little more worthwhile. Our fourth city, which we will almost certainly get, will be down here in this direction. So there's Mongolia. He's well over there. I think he's not going to be too much of a problem for us um, anytime soon. I'm just going to have a quick look over here with the archers. I might as well. There was a barbarian camp on this tile at one point. So it's quite possible that it may have respawned. While barbarian camps can respawn anywhere in the fog of war, they do usually like to respawn on the same tiles over and over again. So it's well worth checking. Uh, that's the library finally finished in Busan. What we should probably do here now is get the... I'm going to buy a shrine, you know, because we're just really, really short on faith. But we're going to hard build the granary. And uh, the reason for that is we still seem short on food. Now, we're going to go over here and settle on the bananas. It's a real shame that we are getting rid of a jungle and we're getting rid of the bananas. But it will give us a, um, a canal city. At least I think we're far enough away. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. I think we can settle there. Yeah, we can, I think. So, if we do that, we have ourselves our third city, and this is going to be a canal city now. We can get through there, which is really, really good. So, what we want to do over here is we will go ahead and... Um, let's go ahead and start working on that library. We are going to need that because we're going to want to get our national college as soon as possible. Uh, you guys have finished that farm, which is very good. Let's go over here and connect the horses up. It's too far away for us to work, but we will be able to sell the horses. And let's just make sure we're working that slot, because to be honest, um, it's for food. 22 turns for the Temple of Artemis. Um, are there any better tiles here that we could be working? Not really. We're pretty much working all of the upgraded tiles. So that is probably where we will stay for now. Uh, we could drop... No, I think that's good. We could drop a couple of food and a culture and go for a bit more production. Gets us down to 20 turns. I think I'll leave it as is. We are still a few turns away from getting our next social policy and getting the uh, the faster uh, the faster building of wonders. But we'll we'll stick with what we've got. Um, I think we'll actually go over here and grab a farm. Just so we've got some more food. Uh, could probably buy a work boat. Might not be a bad idea. Can afford to do it. That would give us the fish. That would be really useful. Because that's a good tile. Um, let's go ahead and purchase ourselves a work boat. 320. Can't quite afford to do it yet. Keep forgetting that I'm playing on uh, Epic. So everything is 50% more expensive than it would be normally. Um, so you guys go ahead and connect that up. I'm sure somewhere is under attack. But... Hmm? Apparently I imagined it. Well, can't see any barbarians over here at the moment. Doesn't mean there aren't any around. You guys are fully healed up. Looks like that's the end of the road. Because the Celts are coming back. So if there was any um, other... Yeah, if there was any other ruins up there, that's going to be gone by now. So we're going to head back this way. We're not going to be able to really get through the Incan territory unless we can sneak up here. Though I'm not convinced there's anything of note. So I might just bring these guys back to protect Basan. Sounds like that's probably a better idea. Uh, you guys just keep having a look around and we'll just sort of do a big circle. Work our way back over to Seoul. And then we'll go ahead and get that other cocoa connected up. Then we'll be able to... Ah, Temple of Artemis been built in the land far away. I left it just a little bit too long. Did give us some extra gold though, so that's not the end of the world. Do I want any of these wonders? Not especially. Um, let us go ahead and build a caravan. We do not have any trade routes at the moment. Or do we want to go cargo ships? Who's coastal? Obviously all three of our cities are coastal. Zurich is coastal. Um, Cusco isn't coastal, but I'm not necessarily sure that we can reach them. Um, yeah, so there is a lot of inland stuff, but it's quite far away. Obviously, we could trade from Busan, though. So, let's have a caravan. 
And in fact, what we can do is we can actually have a look at our... Um, could never find the button now because it's it gets moved. Notification log, military overview, diplomacy, victory progress, world congress, demographics. Oh, trade now you get to by clicking on the trade thing. There we go. So, um, trade routes available. Most gold. Um, so, Seoul and Busan to Zurich are actually our most profitable trade routes. So, with that in mind, we are going to cancel that and we'll actually work on a cargo ship instead. Uh, workboat is 320, so we now can afford to buy one of those. Let's go ahead and do it. You are just kind of working your way around. I don't think we're going to see any more uh, barbarians in that area, but it's always worth having a look. Still making some decent money. It's probably mostly coming from Seredipotosi. I wasn't sure we were still working that. We This is what we do have to be careful of, of course. If we are using um, cargo ships, uh, we do need to make sure that we uh, get rid of all of the barbarians because they're going to be a bit of a pain. Um, you're going to move over there and set up a fishing boat. Very small island, bit of an atoll there. We'll be able to uh, reach that at some point. Uh, what else do we have? Yeah, 62 turns until growth, because once again you're working Serra Potosi, which is great. Um, but we need you to grow at the moment. So why don't you go and work that fish tile? And then you'll be 16 turns away from uh, growth. We need to get a lighthouse there as well, I think. Ah, there is another barbarian camp. Okay. Well, let's finish you off. Uh... Zurich. Zurich want a trade route, which we are going to establish. Um, they also want us to build Stonehenge, and they want us to defeat barbarian units that are invading their territory. So we might actually get a little bit of... Um, uh, well, we're already friendly with them, uh, so we might end up becoming allied, which will be good because they're a mercantile city-state, which means we'd get some extra iron from them, and we would also get some jewellery. Uh, so our new city can fire up on an enemy. You might as well get that one because you can reach that one. Just farming up all these barbarians. And we will definitely have a city on the uh, east coast at some point, I think. It's just a question of when we do it. Unit needing orders. Okay, yeah. I think we are just going to come back to um, Busan just to uh, keep it safe. Somebody else has founded a Pantheon. 15% faster border growth. Colombo no longer needs our help. So we've still got that ship around that we can fire upon. Slightly out of the range of Seoul, but not a problem. Let's keep trying to take these guys out. How much do we need to become friendly with Zurich? We're at 35. And we are going to be establishing a trade route with them very soon, so... We should be able to get allied with them. Always good to get allied with the city-states. Right, that should be enough to kill that Barbarian. Providing nothing spawns in the camp on the end of the turn, we'll be able to go and take that on the next turn. You're just literally going to work back to Basan. Still 53 turns until growth, which is actually quite bad. Uh, Pat... Pat... Uh, I could never say his name. Pachacuti has completed the Terra Cotta army. Maybe it's definitely time to try and get him to go to war with France. Would he be willing to do it, actually? Uh, trade, would you... He, he has no money at the moment. Would you be willing to declare war on Napoleon? He actually would. Uh, for two gold per turn and for coca. I don't have the spare coca yet though, which is the problem. So would you be willing to do it for, say, seven gold per turn? Eight gold per turn? I'm not making a lot. I will be making some more soon. Oh, that's it. I'm only making two gold per turn. I couldn't offer him eight. Um, we will get this other Coco connected up, and then I can give him that. We definitely know that he will go to war with France, though. So it's well worth uh, remembering that. Let's go ahead and grab some more money. Out of interest, would France be willing to go to war with him? Because it might be a cheaper option. You never know. Uh, would you be willing to declare war on... Pachacuti. No, he would not. Uh, what about um, Darius? Because he's quite close to you. No. So France is slightly less willing to warmonger than the Incas. 
Obviously, the Inca's got the Terracotta Army, which has just doubled his uh, number of forces, which is also probably the reason why he's making negative money, because he's probably just been lumbered with a load of maintenance charges. Although, I always thought the AI either didn't pay maintenance costs on their units, or they paid reduced maintenance costs. Either way, I'd soon be soon really be grateful if he actually went to war with France. So, we will try and get that set up as soon as possible. Um, fifth on food, not terrible. We're not got a huge amount of growth here. Seol has grown again. So what tile have you gone off to work? You've gone off to work that hill, which isn't a terrible tile. Um, two hammers, six turns for the cargo ship, seven turns if we work this tile and get more food. I think we're just going to work this tile and get more food. Cargo ship's not terribly far out. You guys now might as well just go on to... Can't you just stay there? You just go on to alert. Unit needs orders. Let's just um, have a look over here. Doesn't look like Zurich's being attacked anymore. Surprised we didn't actually get any uh, reputation from them for killing that barbarian camp. Actually quite surprised. We could try and build Stonehenge. I'd be much more willing to try and build the Oracle though. Now, I think another mistake that I made in my um, sort of previous game as France was... Do we want that one? I guess so. Uh, one mistake that I did make in my previous game as France was... I tried to decide what victory type I was going for right at the beginning of the game. And as a result, I kind of focused too heavily on one particular thing. And I think that's what screwed me over. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to... Not pick what victory type I'm going to go for, and we're just going to see where the game takes us. Uh, let's go ahead and get the wheel. That will allow us to build up roads between our cities. That'll help our economy out a little bit. Of course, it is going to keep our workers busy for a while. Um, so we have gone ahead and uh, got that farm there. You guys can go up and build another farm up here. In fact, you can go and improve the stone, actually. And then the borders will possibly pop over this is another good thing as well without even having to click on the city uh, you can just mouse over the city and the mod will actually show you uh, the orange tiles are tiles that i own the green tiles are tiles that i am working and the purple tile is the tile where my borders are going to expand to next so it's a very very useful little thing there um, you have finished with the horses. Now, we don't really need those horses. We can probably go ahead and sell them. I would like to get the food, but uh, let's go ahead and get the coca so we can trade that with the Incas. Can we sell our um, horses? Trade. We have four horses. Would you be willing to buy them? So what we do is we click on horses, and then we click what will you give me for this. Now, it says looks good to me, which means he doesn't value horses. He doesn't want them. He doesn't have any money. That's probably the reason why. Can't, can't forget about that. Um, so how about if we go to someone like Napoleon? Because he might have some money. He does have some money. So if I go in and click on horses, uh, not his horses, he has his own horses, which means he might not want them. What will you give me for this? Nothing. So he doesn't particularly value horses either. Uh, would anybody like horses? They, they would like horses because it shows on the uh, on the little um, icon there. So if we decide to trade horses, I'm lying. Uh, what would you give me for this? You give me one gold per turn, which is a little bit too low in value um, because a strategic resource is worth 67 gold on 45 gold on standard 67 gold on epic and it's a 45 turn deal so if they gave me one gold per turn i'd only be getting 45 gold and that'd be 22 gold down so it's not really the best deal so we'll wait a little bit till they get a bit more money and then we can ask for more money from them so we've got a unit needing orders. This worker, yeah, I think we're definitely going to get the stone with you. It's a slightly more useful tile. We really do need to get those city connections up and running as quickly as possible. We've only got two workers. I don't like spamming out a lot of workers. I tend to find that um, very early on in the game, you can only upgrade so many tiles at a time because you're waiting for text to pop and you're trying to keep your workers safe from bar barbarians. 
And then towards the middle of the game, you never seem to have enough workers because you've always got like 100 tiles that you need to improve at any one point. And then towards the end of the game, you've got 20 odd workers that you're constantly having to tell them to do, build trading posts in worthless tiles that you're never going to work just to keep them busy. So 19 turns for this plantation, which is a little bit upsetting, but it'll do. So you guys can stay in there. I've got some growth on um, Jeonju, and I should make sure that I'm micromanaging this properly to keep the um, keep people on the right tiles. Because currently we are working, I don't know, we're working the food tiles. That's not too bad. Food tile, food tile. Um, there isn't really a better tile that we could work there. Uh, choose research. We could go into mathematics, get the hanging gardens. It'd be nice if we could grab the hanging gardens, actually. That could be quite nice. Um, one turn away from that cargo ship, which we are going to send to Zurich. Really quite behind on my National College, to be honest. I should have that by now, but uh, we can't build the National College because we are still waiting on a library. So do I want to try and grab any of these wonders? The Oracle could be nice. A free social policy is really, really good. But at the same time, it's actually quite slow to build. I think I'm going to go for the uh, water mill. It's a bit, a bit of extra food and production. I know we do need more cargo ships, but we'll get that sorted out as and when it comes. So you're going to go to Zurich. That'll give us an extra nine gold per turn. And it'll mean we complete that mission. So with that in mind, let us go over to Cusco and I will see once again if he is willing to declare war on um, Napoleon. He is still willing to do it. He doesn't value horses. Let's see if he will take seven gold per turn. He won't. Let's see if he'll take eight gold per turn. Let's try nine. Ten's my final offer. Yeah, he's not going to do it. I'd really, really like him to uh to fight with france but i could give him the spare cocoa once it's connected up but it seems a little bit risky yep glad i didn't go for stonehenge now once serato de posse actually um gets a little uh the, well, the, the city next to Sarasota de Posse gets a little larger. Uh, we should be able to work that and get a lot more gold per turn. And in fact, it might be worth doing that to start that battle off between those two early. Um, two turns before it grows. What tile are you working that we could unwork? If we unwork that, you would still take two turns to grow. And we put you in Sarasota de Posse. Yeah, let's do that then. That gives us a lot more money. So in that case, I'm going to go into um, Cusco. Trade. I would like you to declare war on France, and I'm going to give try try up to twelve. I think. Wow, he really does want a lot for this. There we go. Okay, he's done it. And that's because I think the um, luxury resources work out to be about nine gold per turn. So he was asking for nine gold plus two gold, so it should have been eleven. But uh, either way, that should slow the AI down a little bit there. Just looking at the time, realising that we have gone a little bit over, so I'm just going to make my moves on the next turn, and that'll be the end of the video. Uh, we are at least allied with uh, Zurich now, so you can actually see their icon has turned blue, and it shows me next to them, so that I, you know, you can instantly see who someone is allied with. So if we look down here at uh, Eif, or Ify, or Ify, uh, we can already see that they are allied with the Incans because their icon is next to them. So it's a good way of uh, keeping your eye on what is going on. Hopefully we're not going to get plundered there. I think we should be okay. I think they'll be able to deal with that uh, barbarian on its own. Just going to hit next turn there. I'm not sure if um, that was the last turn or whether we had a unit to move. Uh, Patrick Hooch is actually building a fair few wonders. It might be worth us going and uh, trying to take his capital at some point. But uh, we certainly won't be doing that straight away. Busan has grown, which we were expecting it to. And I also apologise to anybody for completely butchering the names of these cities. I'm I'm terrible with non-English place names. I'm even terrible with some English place names. But I uh, I I if 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 you know how to pronounce uh, a city, by all means tell me, and I'll do my best. But uh, a lot of the time I just don't remember, or I uh, 
lack the ability to pronounce the name but that's pretty much all we can do on this turn so that is a good point to end the video we do have some horses and iron to sell which we'll try and sort out in the next video but until next time thanks for watching i hope you're still enjoying civilization 5 i'll see you on the next video till then goodbye for now